Farmers across the entire African continent are turning dry, rugged desert into productive farms covered with trees. Their tactics are simple but effective, allowing nature to regenerate itself while still providing food and economic opportunities for the local community. Since the continent's population has nearly doubled since 2000, this increase in productivity for communities at the edge of the Sahara Desert is critical for millions of people. The harsh sands of the Sahara cover most of northern Africa. A nighttime view shows you clearly how empty the desert really is. Egypt is especially surprising. 95% of the country lives within just a few miles of the Nile River. These desert countries have almost all their population living just outside the Sahara, where farming is still possible. It comes as no surprise that many of these countries want to expand their farmland, and it's genuinely heartwarming to see the progress some countries have made. But it's been a long road to get here. Many attempts to green the desert have failed, often in catastrophe. So how have these tree planting mega projects gone from catastrophic failure to life-changing success? Let's start at the beginning. One of the first of these efforts was the Green Dam in Algeria. Shortly after Algeria won its war of independence against France, the country started a war against the desert. Algeria is naturally 80% desert, and because of agricultural practices, deforestation, and war, the land had been degrading. The government planned the creation of the Green Dam, a stretch of trees spanning the entire east-west length of the country to keep the desert at bay. It had an ambitious start, with hundreds of thousands of hectares being reforested over just a few decades. But over time, issues started to show. The first problem was the choice of tree to plant. Algeria planted pine forest on the dry steppes they hoped to reform. This choice has been questioned by experts, as the natural vegetation of the steppes, plants like needle grasses and wormwoods, are actually effective barriers themselves. It's risky to bring in a new plant into an ecosystem, especially if you're replacing a whole natural ecosystem with a monoculture plantation of just one single new plant. Unfortunately, we saw this play out in Algeria. Pine caterpillars eventually took a major toll on these plantations. The pine forest approach also didn't fit into the way of life of the locals. Most locals were livestock farmers and would rather have space to graze their sheep and goats instead of a forest. Over time, many of these new pine forests were also harvested to make more room for cropland after all. Despite all the work put in to plant those trees, by the 2010s, large areas of forest were being lost, and experts predict the trend to continue and for most or all the green dam to be gone in the coming decades. Although the Green Dam didn't end up the success its creators dreamed of, it did inspire the work of another project. The region just south of the Sahara Desert, known as the Sahel, stretches from coast to coast in Africa. It's a narrow strip passing through a dozen countries, containing grasslands, savannas, steppes, and shrublands, forming the transition from bone-dry Sahara into the proper savanna further south. Although the region has been making great progress in recent years, the 1970s and 80s saw a tragic drought in the region. The Sahel relies on a short rainy season to grow its food and renew its pastures, and during the 1970s and 80s, that rain barely showed up. Grazing livestock became impossible. Approximately 100,000 people died from food shortage and disease, and many more were forced to relocate. It was in these tragic times that the seed for a great green wall across Africa was planted by the Marxist revolutionary and president of Burkina Faso, Thomas Sankara. Sankara was one of the first post-colonial African leaders to recognize the importance of caring for the earth. He pushed to make bushfires illegal, make cattle roaming more organized, and regulate firewood harvesting all of which could help with the difficult fight against the desert. During a single 15-month period of his reign, 10 million trees were planted across the country. He dreamed of building a wall of trees across the country and eventually across the entire continent. Unfortunately, Sankara was assassinated before he could complete his vision, but the idea lived on. In 2005, the former Nigerian president Olushigan Obasanjo formally proposed the Great Green Wall Initiative to nearby Sahelian leaders, and eventually to the African Union. The African Union bought into it, and by 2007, a plan was put together. 
The plan outlines a broad reforestation effort across the continent, with each country developing its own plan to build resilience in the harsh conditions of the Sahel. The idea was no longer to build a literal belt of non-stop forest, but instead to generally increase vegetation, conserve resources, and farm sustainably in the Sahel. More like a mosaic of diverse solutions rather than a single wall. In contrast with the Great Green Dam in Algeria, the Great Green Wall is planned with local communities, working with the people who already care for the land. Instead of simply being a nuisance for the locals, the newly planted areas can grow valuable resources. Many of the trees chosen need to be pruned, and the clippings can be used to feed livestock or as firewood. Once mature, the trees can grow fruit or sellable products like gum arabic, a commonly used natural stabilizer for soft drinks and cosmetics. Acacia trees, another common choice in the Great Green Wall, also have the benefit of fertilizing the ground with nitrogen that the trees suck from the air, improving productivity of nearby crops. Choosing the right plants to grow is a key way to make sure the local communities value the trees enough to keep them in the ground. But sometimes, the best option is planting nothing at all and instead just taking care of what pops up naturally. The unfortunate truth is that out of the thousands of hectares of trees planted in the early years of Saharan forest projects, around 80% of the trees are no longer standing. The leaders in the Great Green Wall Initiative understood this, and now some of the most successful restoration methods rely mostly on natural regeneration of the land. An amazing version of this transformation can be seen in Niger, where farmers are using three key techniques to turn this dry, seemingly dead desert into a source of life. First, the farmers build little rock walls called buns to slow the flow of the water. Normally when it's rainy, water flows quickly across the ground, but these stone barriers slow that water down, allowing more of it to soak into the soil and also allowing sediment to settle increasing the amount of topsoil and nutrients the farmers can work with. Second, these farmers dig shallow holes called zai to plant their crops in. These small basins capture more water during the rains, and also act to slow the flow of water again and collect even more sediment. Farmers place a small amount of manure compost and a handful of seeds into the zai, so each one fills with life and valuable nutrients after it rains. Finally, as the zai and buns work together to make more productive farms, native trees naturally sprout nearby. In the past, most Nigerian farmers would try and remove these trees, treating them almost like weeds. It was thought that it would take decades before a tree like this could be useful. But now, many farmers see the value of growing these trees. Even when they're young, trees can be pruned, giving the farmer useful fodder to feed animals or turn into a mulch. As they grow, they can also be a useful source of firewood. Some trees even naturally fertilize the soil, making them very valuable to keep around. The results of these techniques speak for themselves. Since the 1980s, Niger has seen over 5 million hectares regenerated. The farmers have grown over 200 million new trees without actually planting any of them, relying on nature to regenerate itself. Whole landscapes are changing. By 2004, after 30 years of progress, Zinder Valley in southern Nigeria had 50 times more trees. One of the most amazing things about this progress is it has been mostly farmer-led. Farmers learn these techniques from their neighbors and pass them down to the next generation because they work. Not only are more trees growing, but yields are going up, allowing the seemingly harsh landscape to support a growing population. In the far east of the Great Green Wall, in Ethiopia, we're seeing similar impressive progress. According to researchers, Ethiopia is now the greenest it's been in 145 years. In the Tigray region, once the poorest part of Ethiopia, farmers have been implementing their own strategies to regenerate the land. In 1991, the government of Tigray launched a campaign to heal their province. Degraded land was protected from livestock grazing and firewood collection in order to let the trees and shrubs grow back. The natural regeneration was supplemented with tree planting and some key farming practices. Farmers built stone buns and terraces. The newly formed terraces are often given to groups of unemployed young people who make great use of the land, farming it intensively to create an income for themselves. More than 1 million hectares have been restored in the region, requiring locals to move an estimated 90 million tons of rock and dirt to literally reshape the land. All the work has paid off, 
In 2007, the region became self-sufficient, producing more food than its local population needs. Since then, poverty has continued to fall, with an average poverty level half of what it once was, much closer to the national average for Ethiopia. To me, the most inspiring thing about these projects across Africa is that they are farmer-led. It can sound really exciting to say something like, we're gonna plant a million trees. But the truth is, big tree planting projects can be expensive and often end up failing in the long term. The farmer-led natural regeneration we see going on in Niger and Ethiopia is a method that can and has scaled up massively. At REN, the company I co-founded, we have looked at and funded a number of tree planting and regeneration projects. It's surprisingly difficult to do right. Most trees are more valuable cut down than left standing. It's only when you get the local community to value the trees that you have a true chance at long-term growth. If the local farmers really value what they're growing, they'll take good care of those trees, plant more, and tell their friends to do the same. We've seen projects grow to plant millions of trees per year using this farmer-led strategy. We'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in learning more and helping fund some of these key climate solutions. Climate change is scary, but stories like these give me hope.